How many visual effects artists in the audience today? One, two, three, okay. The next two features I'm gonna show apply only, at least I think it only applies to visual effects production. That would be commercial, film, and television. So it's gonna be a pretty short demo, but it's, it's very specific to visual effects production. And that would be the use of DPX files. So what I'd like to show, and this is, if you are a artist working on a visual effects production, chances are good that what the client did was they gave you a live action plate that was scanned to deep in the DPX file format. Normally in a visual effects production, these heavy files, these are the sisters of the Cineon file format, normally these heavy files would be converted to JPEGs, but if you, and that way it's lightweight and over a network, but if you honestly do not have time to convert the DPX files, if you have to, there's nothing that'll stop you from just loading it in directly into LightWave now. So this means that you, the visual effects artist, can directly load your client plates straight into LightWave. So, the other thing I'd like to touch on in color space, let me go to linear right now, is that when the client hands you the DPX files, they are also going to be handing you a color lookup table, a lot. This might be in Autodesk, dot 3dl format that would be the Autodesk uh, color lookup table it could be in dot csp format or it can be a dot cube in order to load the LUT file what you do is you left click on display color space load table and go find your LUT file that the client gave you 3dl cube or csp and load that in and this will affect your VPR because you've set the display. It'll affect your F9. So what you'll get is you'll get your your render with the LUT applied. And if you want to, when you're in OpenGL mode, you can also choose on this panel, color correct OpenGL to apply the LUT in OpenGL mode. Again, this is specific to visual effects production and it's one of those things where if you've been in visual effects, you understand why this might be useful, especially if you're strapped for time. And speaking of which, if you are really strapped for time, and I don't recommend this at all, but if you are really strapped for time, and you're usually, I really don't think you're gonna do this, but if you have to, if there is no other choice, if you have to get something out to the client that night, and you don't have time for a compositor to take your element and composite it, and the client demands a DPX file format. If you have to, we do have DPX savers in the render globals. But normally, in, when you have a production like this, what's gonna happen is you will be matching to the background plate, which was provided in DPX file format. You will render out an EXR image against black. So let me hit F9 to show you that if I have use backdrop color turned on, it will render against black because that's what I chose. If I chose render against gray, that's what it'll do for me. It'll override that. So what I could do is I can use OpenGL here to check the plate and then for my final, just use the background color. So for visual effects artists, this is an example of DPX and LUT support in LightWave 11.6. So with that, let me clear all this out. And let me introduce you to the new default color picker. Click a, click a swatch, any swatch, and you will find a rather thorough color picker. And I'm only going to, I'm not even gonna scratch the surface here. Probably the most frequent reason that you would like to use this color picker over other color pickers is it's got a handy little pick from screen ability. So if you were to click this, all of a sudden, in right in here, you see that it's showing you a zoomed in version of what the mouse pointer is looking at. And if you want to slow that down while you're mousing around the screen, you hold down the shift key, and for every 20 pixels that your mouse navigates across the screen, it's only going to be nav going one pixel. So you can use that to now click and select that precise pixel for your color. If you're picking from an image that's a little noisy, you can hit the S key 
to increase the sample size to 3x3 three three average, 5x5 five five average, 7x7 seven seven average, 9x9 nine nine average. That would be 81 pixels sampled to create one solid color, in this case gray. And that way you can get an averaged color. If you're a web designer, you might find this familiar. You can type in hexadecimal values. So if you feel more comfortable, or if you have to work with web values, you can do that here. There's also a nice little feature for people who want to work with high dynamic range values. You can actually go above values of 255, 255, 255, and actually tape, type in HDR numbers with this color picker, and it'll respect that. This will then be down converted to a multiplier, and that lets me introduce you to this nice little multiplier over here. So that if I want to just double whatever values are in here, hit OK, because this is the multiplier. So this will take these values times two, and that's what you'll get in here. You also get a searchable library. So if you want to look for shades of gold, you can type in gold and get those search results. So there's a lot of, a lot of base colors that come with this color picker, all for your convenience. Let's see. What else am I missing? Oh, yes, we do have a color mixer as well, CMYK. So you can toggle between swatches and the mixer. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention you can choose as many bands as you'd like on that mixer. And we also have a few modes to help you pick the right color for your project. And if, so there's a few more options in here and I'm just scratching the surface, but I hope that this color picker helps you with your projects. Thank you. Mm -hmm.